This video will show you how to set up your GH3 and will also show you some tips and tricks for getting the most out of your camera. It is not meant to say that this is the only way to set up your camera. It is more of a good starting point if you are overwhelmed by the number of options on the camera. If you like this video then please rate it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see other videos like it. This video will move through each segment very quickly. The best way to use it is to watch the whole video straight through first to get an overall understanding of each setting. Then watch it with your camera in hand and use the YouTube pause button while you make changes to your camera. Well, the first thing I want to address is the Moyet issue. The fact is that Moyet is not an issue with the GH3. Yes, there are certain circumstances where Moyet will appear. However, the GH2 actually has more of an issue with it than the GH3 does. It will hardly ever occur in real-world experiences. If it does, then just dial down the sharpness and raise the noise reduction, or use a legacy lens that is softer. Next, I want to talk about the changes that were made for the auto and intelligent ISO settings. Most of the photos and videos I take are of my kids doing sports in very low light situations. Therefore, I need a faster shutter speeds with extremely high ISO values. On my GH2, I had to use the shutter priority mode with auto ISO in order to make sure that the shutter speed stayed fast enough and the exposure would always be correct. I couldn't use the program priority mode with auto ISO on the GH2 because it would not let the ISO go above ISO 3200. This meant that in truly low light situations, I was shooting much slower than 1 60th of a second with moving subjects. The intelligent ISO setting is no better because it is limited to ISO 3200 as well, and it only uses that when there is extreme subject motion. The GH3 simply gives me much better flexibility in auto ISO mode because it allows it to go all the way to ISO 12800. The GH3 manual actually incorrectly states that the auto ISO is limited to ISO 3200. I'm really glad that isn't the case. Next I want to go over setting up the custom functions. These settings are critical for being able to quickly switch between the ideal settings for each type of scene. The GH3 offers five of these custom settings as opposed to only three in the GH2. I shoot both stills and video, so I typically set up about half of the custom settings for stills and half for video. I like to make my C1 setting as flexible as possible. My goal is to set up C1 so that I can hand it to anyone and say, here, shoot some video and pictures with this. With the GH2, I had to set this up with shutter priority mode because of the auto ISO issues I talked about before. However, that meant that I had to pre-select an appropriate shutter speed before I handed the camera off. Now with the GH3 I can use program priority mode and it will always select an appropriate shutter speed and ISO value for the scene without the user needing to adjust anything. In this mode you can truly use it as a point and shoot camera. Here are examples of all the normal color modes at base ISO. They are all actually pretty good, however two of them stand out in my opinion. The first is the vivid mode. I know, I know, you think vivid can't possibly be useful because it has too much contrast. Yes, that is true. If you are going for a flatter image, it is not the best choice. However, it actually has the least amount of noise of all of the color modes. That is because all the other modes achieve a flatter image by artificially raising the exposure in the shadow areas. Now the difference in noise is not a huge difference, so using Vivid is only a good idea where noise reduction is your priority. I shoot a lot of astrophotography, so this is the mode I will shoot in. For everything else, I settled on the scenery mode. It doesn't quite offer as flat as an image as portrait does, however portrait has a little mu too much noise for the high ISO images I usually shoot. Here is an example of what I usually deal with. This is an ISO 12800 image at f1.4 and 1 15th of a second shutter speed. This is my daughter's favorite horse and she was giving it a treat after her lesson. With a GH2, I wouldn't have even attempted this shot in near darkness. I couldn't use a flash e either because it would spook this particular horse. I know this image wouldn't look good in a large size print, however it does just fine when displayed on a computer screen. Being able to get a picture at all in this situation is what makes the GH3 so special. The next part of setting up C1 is to make sure all of the function buttons are set up correctly for quickly changing the most frequently used settings. The GH3 has 7 quick buttons as opposed to only 3 on the GH2, however some of the function buttons have limited choices for what you could set them to, so you have to choose what each bu button does systematically. The default for function button 1 is to control wireless. I use the wireless almost always to instantly upload the pictures I take to the web, so I'll leave that one alone. The default for custom button 2 is to control the quick menu. 
I am used to the quick menu button being right on top of the control dial on the GH2, so I switch this around. I set function button 2 to control the autofocus mode and function button 3 to control the quick menu. I have not determined what the best autofocus mode is yet, however my initial test showed that the new AFF setting with the one small box area focus works very well, so that is what I have been using so far. This setting also allows me to have one touch button for bringing up magnified view for critical manual focusing. I know a lot of people have questions about that. You can also touch the screen to get the magnified view. This setting also made me realize that the 35 to 100 mm f2.8 is not parfocal like everyone expected. I'm zooming it in manual focus mode here and you can clearly see that it does not hold a constant focus point throughout the zoom range. However, if you zoom with autofocus on, it will automatically correct for this and appear to be parfocal. The quick menu is the most important button to set up correctly. It should be set up with all of the settings that you adjust frequently. However, it should not contain any settings that do not apply to that mode. Fortunately, the GH3 gives us the ability to customize this menu. If any of the selections are grayed out, then they are not applicable to that mode. I would start by switching those out for settings that you use frequently. I like to put the photo color style, image quality type, movie resolution, and electronic shutter selections on the first screen. After that, it's just a matter of preference. You can use the YouTube pause button now to get a good idea of a starting point for how to set up this menu. I set the movie resolution and frame rate to 1080p at 60 frames per second dot MOV by default. That is by far the most versatile video setting. It allows for very fluid motion and still has excellent quality. The 1080p at 24 frames per second dot MOV mode should be used if you are trying to match your frame rate to film. The 1080p at 30 frames per second dot MOV mode should be used if you want to use the ETC function with 1080p. The 720p at 30 frames per second dot MP4 mode should be used if you want to use ETC with a 720p resolution. I will probably never use any of the other video modes, including all of the AVC HD modes. They simply do not offer me any benefit over the modes I listed. They are all lower bit rate and the file structure is not user friendly. However, that might not be the case for everyone. I know that some gaming consoles won't play certain files natively, so that could be an issue for some people. Function button 4 is limited as what you can assign to it. The default selection is the constant preview setting that allows you to see exactly what the camera will see with the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO you have selected. With program priority mode, all it will do is slow down the refresh rate of the screen, so I switched this to show me the new level function instead. I set the function 5 button to turn on and off the electronic shutter option. There has been a lot of talk about this option so far. It is great because it allows you to take absolutely silent, full resolution raw images even in burst mode. However, it does have some limitations. You can't use over ISO 1600 with it and you can't use slower than one second shutter duration. The one second shutter speed is not a huge issue for me except for while I'm doing astrophotography. The ISO 1600 is a deal breaker most of the time though. I leave it off, but I always have the quick button 5 to turn it on in certain situations. You also need to be aware that it can skew objects when there are fast pans or when the subject is moving because the camera has a rolling shutter. That happens very rarely though. I had to try hard to produce these images. The last two function buttons are only accessible on the touch screen. I set those up to control the burst rate and the AFS versus AFF. One of the biggest improvements on the GH3 is that the burst shots will clear the memory buffer much faster than the GH2. You only got a few burst images before the GH2 would freeze up while clearing the memory for almost one minute. With the GH3 it clears it and allows you to shoot more burst images in only a few seconds. I normally choose to shoot burst images in the mode that has live view. However, there are times when a slightly faster burst speed is also beneficial, so I have function 7 set up to control that. Turning the autofocus from AFF to AFS and putting it on the highest burst speed setting will give you the fastest burst rate, but you will lose continuous autofocus and the live view. That brings me to some issues with the GH3. Now none of these are absolute deal killers to me, however they are definitely issues that Panasonic needs to address.
First off, and probably the biggest issue, is that the sensor that detects whether the flash is open or not is too easily fooled into thinking the flash is open. It will actually try to trigger the flash while it is closed. A simple light press on it to the left will make it see it as closed and resolve the issue. However, this situation never should happen in the first place. You can tell if it is not working right if the flash is closed and the lightning bolt with the eye icon is displayed. If that is the case, then gently push the flash to the left until it turns the icon off. I hope Panasonic sees this and addresses this issue. Perhaps firmware can make the flash sensor less sensitive. The second issue is that the viewfinder has a weird halo in it if your eye moves slightly to one side. The GH2 has this issue, but to a much lesser extent. I don't normally use the viewfinder, however, if I did, I see how this could be annoying. The third issue is that the screen blacks out for way too long if you are shooting in the single exposure JPEG mode and the ISO is at or above 3200. If you shoot RAW, then it doesn't black out. Also, if you shoot in burst mode, it won't black out the screen like it does when you shoot single exposure JPEG images. I am not sure why this happens, but it is very annoying. It appears to be specific to the GH3 only. If you shoot three consecutive single exposures, then the first two will black out and each one after that will not. I turned off all in-camera processing that I could find, so I don't believe those settings are the issue. I think that this will definitely need a firmware upgrade to resolve it. The last issue is that you cannot set the flash exposure amount to be controlled with a function button. Instead, you have to navigate through the menu every time you want to make a change to that setting. That covers all my settings for Custom 1. I have to do these videos in separate pieces due to time constraints, so look for future videos that will walk you through maximizing video and image quality, setting up wireless, using the HDR mode, and exploring the creative color controls.